Lord became my protector. He brought me out to a place of freedom. He saved me because he delighted in me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that the course of our world may be directed by your peaceful rule, and that your church may rejoice, untroubled in her devotion, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. I thank the Lord and I praise him. I bless the name of the Lord. When I was young and innocent, I sought wisdom openly in my prayer. I prayed for her before the temple, and I will seek her until the end. And she flourished as a grape soon ripe. My heart delighted in her. My feet kept to the level path because from earliest youth I was familiar with her. In the short time I paid heed, I met with great instruction. Since in this way I have profited, I will give my teacher grateful praise. I became resolutely devoted to her, the good I persistently strove for. My soul was tormented in seeking her. My hand opened her gate, and I came to know her secrets. I directed my soul to her, and in cleanness I attained to her. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The precepts, precepts of, of the, the Lord, Lord give, give joy, joy to the heart. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. The precepts, the precepts of, of the Lord, Lord give joy to the heart. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. The precepts, the precepts of, of the Lord, Lord give joy to the heart. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. The precepts, the precepts of the Lord, Lord give joy to the heart. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold, sweeter also than syrup or honey from the comb. The precepts, the precepts of, of the Lord, Lord give joy to the heart. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus and his disciples returned once more to Jerusalem. As he was walking in the temple area, the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders approached him and said to him, By what authority are you doing these things? Or who has given this authority, or who has given you this authority to do them? Jesus said to them, I shall ask you one question. Answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. Was John's baptism of heavenly or of human origin? Answer me. They discussed this among themselves and said, If we say of heavenly origin, he will say, Then why did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, they sh but we shall say of human origin. But shall we say of human origin? They feared the crowd, for they all thought John really was a prophet. So they said to Jesus in reply, We do not know. Then Jesus said to them, Neither shall I tell you by what authority I do these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As soon as I get tongue-tied when I'm reading these Gospels, I'm sorry about that. So we see our Lord today. He's pointing out for these men here, these Pharisees, their own inability to pick a side. And we see this also in the book of Revelation. Our Lord does not like those who don't pick a side. He speaks about those who are lukewarm. He says, how I wish you were hot or cold, but since you are lukewarm, I'll spit you out. 
because he's unable to talk with them. They don't want to have a real conversation. They aren't able to hear his words. They aren't able to receive the truth. And we see what's going on in these Pharisees' minds, how they're not open to the Lord because they're more concerned about other things. They're concerned about other people think. They're concerned about winning an argument. But what they aren't concerned about is their relationship with God. They aren't concerned about the Lord's truth. They aren't concerned about living in light of that fact. Living in light of the political realities of the time is something they're very comfortable with. But living in light of what the Lord is asking them is something they are unwilling to even to see. And so we see for that reason, our Lord does not even engage them. And so for us too, we know that our faith puts things on our heart. We know that it demands things of us. We know that our lives are supposed to be different for having encountered the Lord. And for those of you who I know well here, I know that this has had an impact on you. Your lives are different for having encountered the Lord. And we know that this is not something that ever stops. But the more that we get to know the Lord, just as anyone who is a true good friend has that impact on us throughout our life, so too our Lord continues to ask things of us, continues to ask more and more. We know this often puts us in uncomfortable positions, places we wish we could just step back and kind of remain ambivalent. But our Lord does not leave that as an opportunity or an option for us. But rather, he draws us on. Sometimes this can feel like a demand, but we know that it is motivated by love. And we know that that love calls us forth to more and more. And so we see this play out too in this first reading where this young man who's writing this gospel, where he speaks when he was a young man, how he desired to seek wisdom. And how that desire for wisdom drew him on and on and on. So he said he was able to plunge the depths of it. So sometimes it caused him great pain, but yet he continued to seek it. We know from the history that this writer of the book of Sirach is one who was one in the royal court, one who had become an advisor to the kings. And so we see that this desire for wisdom led him up to the very heights. And so for us, it also speaks as that impetus to continue to witness to our faith before others, to begin to have that conversation, to encourage one another in the faith, to be witnessed by the way of our life, but also by our words, by the things that we choose to do or not do, the things that we choose to say or encourage or to also to discourage. And the temptation nowadays is to make that a public social media thing. But our Lord calls us above all to those very real and personal relationships in our lives. That's where it's most difficult to witness, but that's where the most real impact can be had. And so before we go to speak to the hilltops, let us first begin to speak to those people that we know and that we love, that we share our lives with on a day-to-day -day basis. Because that is where the Lord's light can truly shine. Because that is where the love of the Lord can truly be brought forth. And that's where that truth can be most readily received and be heard. And it's from there then that we can grow in a truly organic way. As I was reading this reading from Sirach, I was reminded of there's a line, if you ever read the book War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy, where at the end, there's, well, the main characters you see, one, there's this Prince Andrew, who's a very heroic man throughout the whole book. And he does these very heroic things. He's a general in the army, and he leads, you know, a charge at the end. He's also very intelligent, and so he, he rewrites the legal codes for, you know, for Russia. And so we see this as a very kind of high ideal person. The other one we see, the other hero, is this man, Pierre, who lives a bit of a profligate life, but begins to find his way and begins to truly live out a life of truth and of goodness. And we see at the end of the book, there's this young man who is Pierre's son. And he hears these stories of his uncle, Andrew, who had been this great hero for the Russian people. He sees his father, Pierre, who's now a counselor to the government and is helping to bring about this greater sense of truth and justice and concord 
in his own country. And the book ends with him then going to sleep, but offering this very heartfelt prayer to God that he too is going to seek after the best things, that he too is going to live a life of wisdom and of truth, that he too is going to set himself for the highest of ideals and to live by that. And so for us, as we continue to set our own hearts on the Lord, we set our own hearts on our relationship with the Lord, our own hearts on living as disciples of Christ, that highest of ideals we can live by, we know that that has effect on those around us in ways that we can see, but even in ways that we cannot see, that others too will take up that call to then seek the Lord with all of their hearts, minds, and souls. And so as we come before him today to receive the Eucharist, we ask him that he might continue to feed us and to lead us forth in our lives of discipleship, that he too might call forward other young men and women to continue in that journey. Gathered today as one, let us turn to God with our needs this day. For our holy church, may God's wisdom continue to guide her. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all of those who hold elected office, may God lead them in knowledge and understanding. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For victims of oppression or marginalization, may God help them to find freedom and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For our faith community, as we grow in wisdom together, may the Holy Spirit guide our ministries and programs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have entered eternal life, may God lead them to everlasting joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our parishioners and for Jack Crilly, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, your Son showed us your way of authority. Through his works and words of love, hear our prayers today and answer them in your holy wisdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who provide gifts to be offered to your name and count our oblations as signs of our desire to serve you with devotion, we ask of your mercy that what you grant us, grant as the source of merit, may also help us to attain merit's reward. Through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. For indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Our 
away, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, in memory of me. Give faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Pope St. Paul the Sixth, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and ever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. For I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul. Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age, says the Lord. Online, our spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by the same sacrament with which you feed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Mighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing. You reign now in splendor with Jesus our King. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created. Let us pray. O God, who did instruct the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant us in the same Spirit to be truly wise and ever to rejoice in his consolation, through Jesus Christ our Lord. O Mary, conceived without sin, O Mary, conceived without sin. O Mary, conceived without sin. O Lord Jesus Christ, who have vouchsafed to glorify by numberless miracles the Blessed Virgin Mary, immaculate from the first moment of her conception, grant that all who devoutly implore her protection on earth may eternally enjoy your presence in heaven, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit live and reign, God, forever and ever. O Lord Jesus Christ, who for the accomplishment of your greatest works have chosen the weak things of the world, that no flesh may glory in your sight, and who for a better and more widely diffused belief in the immaculate conception of your mother, wish that the miraculous medal be manifested to St. Catherine Labore, and we beseech you that filled with like humility we may glorify this mystery by word and work. Amen. Remember, O most compassionate Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your assistance, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly unto you, O Virgin of virgins, our mother. To you we come, before you we kneel, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in your clemency hear and answer them. Amen. O Immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of our Lord Jesus and our Mother, penetrated with the most lively confidence and draw powerful and never failing intercession, manifested so often through the miraculous medal, we, your loving and trustful children, implore you to obtain for us the graces and favors we ask during this novena, if they be beneficial to our mortal souls and the souls for whom we pray. You know, O Mary. You know, O Mary, how often our souls have been the sanctuaries of your Son, who hates iniquity. Obtain for us then a deep hatred of sin, and that purity of heart which will attach us to God alone, so that our every thought, word, and deed may tend to His greater glory. Obtain for us also a spirit of prayer and self-denial that we may recover by penance what we have lost by sin, and at length attain to that blessed abode where you are the queen of angels and of men. Amen. O Virgin Mother of God, Mary Immaculate, we dedicate and consecrate ourselves to you under the title of Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal. May this medal be for each one of us a sure sign of your affection for us and a constant reminder of our duties toward you. Ever while wearing it, may we be blessed by your loving protection and preserved in the grace of your Son. O most powerful Virgin, Mother of our Savior, keep us close to you every moment of our lives. 
obtain for us, your children, the grace of a happy death, so that in union with you we may enjoy the bliss of heaven forever. Amen. O Mary, conceived without sin. O Mary, conceived without sin. O Mary, conceived without sin. Hail, Holy Queen, enthroned above, O Maria. Hail, Queen of mercy and of love, O Maria. Triumph, all ye cherubim, sing with us, ye seraphim. Heaven and earth resound the hymn, Salve, 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 Regina. 